Welcome everyone. Today I'll walk through the process of moving a SQL Server user database to another drive. This is an essential skill for managing your SQL Server environment, especially if you're dealing with disk space constraints or need to optimize performance. Let's dive into the objective of this lesson. By the end of this lesson, you'll understand why we need to move database files and steps involved in doing so safely. I'll introduce three common methods, but we'll focus on the Ultra Database method today. You'll also learn a bonus tip for setting default file locations to simplify future operations. Moving database files is often necessary for several reasons. First, disk space might run out on the drive hosting your data files. Keeping your database files on the C drive, for example, is risky since it can crash your entire system if it fills up. Also, moving files to a dedicated drive can improve performance by reducing disk contention. These are some of the key motivations for learning this process. There are three primary methods to move database files. Backup and restore, detach and attach, and the alter database method. Backup and restore involves creating a full backup and restoring it to a new location. Detach and attach means taking the database offline, moving the files, and reattaching them. The alter database method allows you to modify file locations without detaching, and this is what we'll focus on today as it's safe and efficient. Before starting, make sure you meet these prerequisites. Understand the difference between logical and physical file names. Have administrator permissions on your SQL Server instance and always take a full backup of the database before making any changes. Backups are your safety net in case something goes wrong. Let's go over the five steps we'll follow. First, identify the current file locations using a simple SQL query. Then, Take the database offline so you can safely move the files. Next, move the files physically to the target drive and after that, update SQL Server with the new file locations. Finally, bring the database back online and verify the changes. We'll go through each step in detail. The first step is identifying logical and physical file locations of the database. We will run this query in SQL Server Management Studio to retrieve the file information. Make a note of the logical names and the file paths as you'll need them in later steps. This step is crucial for ensuring you move the correct files. So first we'll head over to SQL Server Management Studio and create a new database named Demo. We'll execute this. Now we can see demo in our databases and if we take a look at the properties and if we go to options or files, we can see that this is where the data and log file is stored. They have a logical name right there. We can run this query here to get the logical and physical name of the database. In this column, we have the logical name and in this column, we have the physical name. We'll copy this logical and physical name for later steps in this demo. Before moving the files, the database must be offline. We'll run the alter database command with the offline option. This ensures there are no active connections which might otherwise cause issues. If you have active connections, use the rollback immediate option to disconnect them. Always confirm the database is offline before proceeding. So we'll go back to SQL Server and we'll take this databa database offline. We can use this command and also we have another way through the graphic user interface. We'll just right click the database, go to tasks and we can select take offline. We'll drop all active connections and now the database is offline. Now it's time to move the files. Navigate to the directory containing the MDF and LDF files and move them to the target location. Ensure the new directory is accessible to the SQL Server service account. This step is done outside of SQL Server, so you'll use your File Explorer or Command Line tool to move the files. So we'll go to our File Explorer 
as you saw earlier, we saw the location of the data file. So we'll go to this PC, C drive, program files, SQL server, go to Microsoft SQL server and to the data directory. And there are our two files we just made moments ago. And we want to, I'm going to move them to my D drive right here. So that's just a simple drag and a drop. Continue and continue. Now, as I mentioned, you also need to make sure that your current Microsoft SQL Server service account has enough permissions on this drive. So just to quickly show you, we can just go to the configuration manager. And I turned a lot of these services off just so that my laptop could go a little faster. But if you look here, the service account for the SQL Server service is NT service backslash MS SQL Server. So I'll quickly just show you how to add that to give it permissions on this drive. So we go to properties or no, you right click and you go to, no, yeah, you do go to, you know, not pin to start. Uh, you go to properties and you go to security and I already added it, but I'll just quickly, I can just delete it just so that I can show you how to add it. So I'm going to remove this guy apply okay so if you don't add it you'll get an access denied issue when you try and bring online the database so all you got to do is edit add and now you just add the service account that was listed there as we saw moments earlier in the configuration manager check names you do this one Click OK, and for demonstration purposes, I'll just give it full control. Hit Apply, hit OK, hit OK, and there it is. So now if we go to Properties, Security, you see our MS SQL Server is right there. After moving the files, you need to inform SQL Server of their new locations. So we'll use the Alter Database command with the Modify File option to update the file paths. Replace the logical names and file paths with the ones you recorded earlier. Run these commands in SSMS and verify that SQL Server recognizes the new file locations. So here we're telling SQL Server the, loca the new location of the MDF and LDF file. We'll execute. And it got modified in the system catalog. Final step is to bring the database back online. We'll run the alter database command with the online option. Once the database is online, query the sys.database underscore files catalog view again to confirm the file paths have been updated successfully. We'll test the database to ensure everything is functioning as expected. So final step, bring it back online. And there we go, it's back online. And now we can see the new location of the, the new physical name. And if we go and refresh it here, we can go to properties. And we can see if we go to files, the database file path is under the D drive. So it is now using this log and data file for this database. So to summarize, always take a full backup before starting. Ensure SQL Server has the necessary permissions for the new file locations. Avoid moving system databases like master unless absolutely necessary. Following these guidelines will help you complete the process smoothly and without errors. Here's a bonus tip to make your life easier. Set the default file locations for the new databases in SSMS, we can go to the instance properties, navigate to the database settings page, 
and set default paths for data and log files. Remember to restart the SQL Server for changes to take effect. And this step ensures future databases are created in the desired locations automatically. So just to demonstrate that, we go to our server, we go to properties, we go to database settings. Now all data files are placed in this directory right here and all log files are placed in this directory here. So if we want to change that to be another drive so that all new database data and log files are placed on that drive, we simply change it here. So I want all new files to be on my D drive for my data files and let's say log files and we click OK. Let's restart our SQL Server. Remember always be very careful when restarting the SQL Server. We would typically do this in off hours in order to make sure that we don't interfere with any sort of running applications. Okay, so now if we take a quick look at our configuration, now all data and log files will be made on the D drive. And just to demonstrate, let's make a new database called Demo2. Let's create the database. Let's take a look. And it got made on the D drive. And we can even take a look here. And there are two more. The data and log file are right here. So from now on, the data and log file will be made on the D drive due to this configuration. Today, we've covered the reasons for moving database files, the five-step process using the alter database method, and a handy tip for setting default file locations. With this knowledge, you're equipped to manage database files efficiently and safely in your SQL Server environment. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.